Hello, it's George Anderson here from IntelligentRunning.com and I'm joined again today by Warren Pohl from the 33Shake.com. Hey Warren, how are you doing today? Very good, George. Pleasure as ever to catch up with you. <laughs> and today we are going to catch up and actually I'm, I'm looking forward to a bit of an education today because we're going to be talking about maltodextrin, which is something yes. that a, a lot of people have heard about, some people haven't heard about, but if you're a runner, chances are you've consumed some of it. So um, I, I, we're just going to fire straight into this. And I, First of all, why, why is this something that runners, what we're going to talk about in the next 10 minutes, why is it something that people should give a monkeys about in the first place and listen to us? All right, well, if, you, if you're a runner, uh, you're probably concerned with your health, uh, one way or another, either because uh, you're looking to get healthy or because you are healthy and you're looking to improve performance. You're probably going to read nutrition labels. You're probably also going to consume a lot of sports nutrition products or be exposed to them. And the mainstay of the majority of them is this stuff called maltodextrin. And, um, you know, you can look around and try and read up on it. What is it? It says it's a carbohydrate, which is part of the story. Look deeper, maltodextrin is actually sugar. It is processed man-made sugar with a higher glycemic index than table sugar. Okay. This, it will spike your blood sugar and your insulin higher, faster, and harder than a spoon of table sugar. Now, as a runner, you probably wouldn't chow down on table sugar 24-7, and if you did, you'd want to know you were. But what we're going to get to is the fact that maltodextrin will do all of that and worse, but you don't know that it's going to do that because they're allowed to hide it on the nutrition label. Okay, well, we're going to, we'll come to that point again in a moment, but just to go backtrack a second, you said it's got a very high, semic, a gly, high glycemic index, so it spikes the blood sugars, yeah. but when you're running, I mean, a lot of, the, a lot of products like energy gels and sports drinks uh, are designed to be consumed when you're running. So surely at that point, is, is that not a good thing, even when you're running, to get that, that, that quick release energy? Because that's what a lot of run, that's what it's marketed on the basis that you need this energy, and here it is. There are times under extreme duress, in extreme performance, if you're really trying to cane it at your top level, you're going to need that spike. But that is extreme instances. The way it's sold and marketed is as a sole fueling source. Now here's the problem with fueling on maltodextrin. You're getting a quick gain. Bang! Hit of sugar. Awesome, right? But you're also, for every quick gain, there's a downside. Don't think you're getting that free because the next downside is boom, massive energy crash. Plus, you're acidifying your system by taking the, the uh, sugars in. That's no good for your long-term health. You're spiking your insulin. You're spiking your blood sugar. We know that's bad for you, full stop. Um, and you are consuming. It's like consuming sweets. There's really no difference. So you're going to get that hit of energy. Then you're going to crash down mentally and physically. Long-term, it is very, very bad for you. Okay, so there's a bit of, there's a bit of subterfuge in with the industry, perhaps, as to you know, what maltodextrin it is, because as you said, it's carbohydrate, and we'll, we'll come on to that in a moment. Um, but manufacturers, you know, openly have it on, on the, the ingredient labels. And, um, I mean, for, for the, the layperson, even my, my, you know, myself, I am a layperson, but you know what I mean? It, I, I feel, I'd look at the label and i think maltodextrin, to me, certainly up until a few years ago, that, that kind of, it's got malt. Malt is healthy, right? Malt, uh, it sounds healthy, it sounds quite wholesome. So you think maltodextrin, and you look at it and you think, well, that's better than just sugar. So well, although they don't say it, there's almost a misleading angle to it. And, um, and we're kind of thinking, well, this is something that's good for us, when in fact we're, we're saying that it's not. So I guess the, the, old, the old ultimate thing for why this is important is because uh, you, you're, we're, we're blowing the lid on this and, um, and saying, look, guys, we, girls, we've got to be reading labels and understanding it's, it's not just reading the label, it's understanding. Now, that, that's the exact key to this. And the first bit about maltodextrin is the name. Now, consciously or otherwise, you would probably know that a sugar tends to end in O's, glucose, fructose, sucrose. You want to avoid those things or know when you're consuming them and why. Um, maltodextrin, well, it's an extrin. It's not sugar. Brilliant, that's okay for me. And you don't really look any further than that. That's the good thing about it. Now, actually, you would think maybe this is a conspiracy or, or this is a clever way to sneak sugar in under the radar. It's a lot more than that. Um, and if you would like the smoking gun, we'll, we'll go straight to it. Uh, let's look at a grain processing company in America who are a major supplier of, among other things, maltodextrin. 
And on Obsession, on their website, and I can send you the link to this. It's this, not this is where manufacturers of sports supplements and other products that use maltodextrin, this is where they get the product from in the first place. This is a bulk supplier of maltodextrin, right. so okay. absolutely. Um, and they said, spotlight is the section. Lower the sugar on your label. This is talking to manufacturers, right? This is not lower the sugar in your product. Look at the words. Lower the sugar on your label. Right. Okay, let's go on. It's common to walk through the grocery store and see people studying labels on products. That's the likes of you and me trying to be healthy. What are they looking at? Many look at the nutrition facts panel, comparing different levels of fats, calories, sodium, and sugars. Again, that's us trying to educate ourselves. How can a food manufacturer make their label more appealing to the potential customer? Again, notice, not make their product healthier for the customer, make their label more appealing to the customer. One way may be to decrease the amount of sugars on the label. Again, not decrease the sugars in the product, because you know sugar is addictive, it keeps us coming back, it doesn't forget that it's bad for us, it sells. Um, don't decrease the sugar in the product. So they say, decrease the sugar on the label. Um, but decreasing the amount of sugar or creating new low sugar products can leave formulators with a challenge. Maltodextrin may be the answer. Um, so, where do we get to the next bit? Uh, sorry, I'm just reading ahead here. Uh, yeah, it might. they might not go any further than that on this site, but there, there you've got the angle. So, let's use okay. Maltodextrin to change the label. Let's look at another website uh, from Bell Chemical, another big provider of Maltodextrin, and they will put these two pieces together. Uh, they then talk about multidextrin in the same way. And, right. Many soft drinks and other flavored beverages contain multidextrin in their formulas so that they can have a lower amount of sugar on the nutrition facts label. This is the absolute key. On the nutrition label, multidextrin is included under the total carbohydrate heading instead of the sugar label. Wow. <laughs> it doesn't, it's sugar. It's got a higher glycemic index than table sugar. They don't have to label say, sugar. There's an amount of sugars per 100 grams. You don't have to declare all that maltodextrin in there. That's one hell of a loophole. <laughs> I mean, amazing that it exists. And as an example, we can cover the brand nearly. I can't really cover it, but there you go. That's what it is. Uh, <laughs> this, this is this is any old gel, right? Uh -huh. uh, notice it's not open because I wouldn't touch any of this stuff myself. But um, ingredients, water, maltodextrin. And then the next ingredient is L-carnitine, less than 1%. Or ingredients are in order of uh, amount. amount. So there's most water, then there's the next most maltodextrin. The next most copious ingredient is less than 1%. Right. So the water and the maltodextrin are making up 99% of this. There is no other carb source in there. And there are 32 grams of carbohydrate per 100. Right. So that's coming from maltodextrin. Yet there's only one gram of sugar. <laughs> wow. Because there's a little bit of sweetener in there. There's a bit of sucralose and something called acesulfame K, whatever on earth that may be. Sweetener, yeah. So there, there's your sweetener. Your 31 grams of maltodextrin by deduction there per 100 doesn't show up on the sugar label. This is a low sugar product, yet it's 32% sugar. So, so, I mean, maltodextrin, it sounds to a manufacturer, sounds like a really sweet deal. Can you see what I've done there? Um, like and is it is it is it cheap to buy? Is it expensive for manufacturers? I mean, what's the what's the rub? Why do they go for this? Is it just that? I mean, surely they don't want to just pull the wool over our eyes. There must be another another reason for including it. You've hit the nail on the head again. <laughs> uh, let's see how much does maltodextrin cost? If if you or I went to a bulk supplier, and bear in mind we are not buying a lot of this stuff, but the minimum you can buy in bulk is a metric ton or 1,000 kilos. Right. Okay, so if you go and buy from a supplier, I just had a look around on the web, I didn't phone anyone up for deals, I just saw where the prices started. So, uh, 32 pence per kilo. 32 pence a kilo? Yes, or 0 .0, 0 0.003 pence per gram. So if there is 31 grams of it in here, that still doesn't make one P. Wow, not even a penny. 
No, not even a penny, and that's if you make the entire gel out of it. Bear in mind the most, the actual most common ingredient in a lot of the more, water. Uh, they call them more palatable gels, is water, and that's tap water, which is even cheaper than maltodextrin. Ooh, right, wow. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's, that's popular, that gives you the marketing budget, mm. so then tell us how great this stuff is. To create the science behind the product and... E exactly, and I'd just like to make it clear, I'm not holding this up as a, as a single source of the problem, no, absolutely not. Yeah. This is merely an example of any gel, and they're basically, so many products out there are the same. So, so with this information, anybody listening to this or watching this, really it's about being aware and understanding what it is we're doing. And I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of experimenting, and I always kind of consider myself and encourage others to consider themselves to be an experiment of one. So rather than just saying, well, look, this is the only way of doing things. This is, I, I have to refuel with energy gels and these sweets and these energy drinks at whatever time intervals through the race. To, by all means, try that. But then try it without. Try it with other sources. Um, I mean, I know, obviously, um, 33 Shake has a maltodextrin-free version of a gel, which I'm, I'm about to use for the first time on Sunday at the Oxford Half Marathon, which I'm kind of excited about. And uh, and that's made from chia seeds. Absolutely, so, absolutely. I mean, we it was it was all. This is all part of the process that led us to founding the company. The simple realization that at the most basic level, uh, we're healthy people. We want performance from our bodies. Yet most sports nutrition, as we've seen from the maltodextrin example, and it's not alone. Uh, most sports nutrition is junk food. Mm. And I don't mind eating junk food if I know I'm eating junk food. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I like to that, it, not knowing. But, yeah, but it's the fact that. Things you know, a lot of sports nutrition sold as a healthy product. Yet, high glycemic index and table sugar, cost peanuts, processed man-made ingredient. Really, is that good for me? No, it's not good for me at all. So we set out to find an alternative, and as you know, that's our chia energy gel, and um, it's 100 percent natural, and there is no maltodextrin in there. There are chia seeds. We use a bit of coconut palm sugar. You know, you're getting those sugars, those carbohydrates, you're getting other vitamins and minerals as well because we're dealing with real food. But, you know, that's that's it. I hope you enjoy them at the weekend. Well, I'm sure I will. I'll report back on how uh, how well they, they work out for you. But, uh, Warren, that's been brilliant. I mean, that, that, I feel like we've kind of, um, we're doing our, our, our bit for the running community here and kind of almost exposing um, what, what's, go what's going on and opening. My eyes have certainly been open. It's been an education to me. So um, hopefully it has been to everyone else who's watching. So, Thank you very much for your time this morning. And, um, well, we're going to catch up very soon and talk about the fat-burning zone and how to encourage your body to be more uh, more, more of a fat burner rather than the, a carbohydrate burner, um, a glycogen burner. And we're going to catch up about that very soon. So I'll link to that video from this one. Um, but otherwise, thanks a million, and um, we'll be in touch soon. George, a pleasure. Catch you in a bit. Bye for now.